The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 6th. Yeah, it's a wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, when I were going to go check on the circumstance of these markets, we'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices are trading to the upside. Not by a ton. The Dow's up 47 points, a little over one-tenth percent. Same for the S&P, or six points. Same for the NASDAQ 100, that's 24 points. One percent for the Russell, 19-point move there. Eight-tenths for the semis, that's 28 points. Uh, Trannies are basically flat. They're up 14. Gold's up $9. Silver's off nine cents. 30-year treasury printed out at 12016. That's up one point and two ticks. You got lights be crude off 260 and natural gas down two pennies. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, you've got regenerative pharmaceuticals. 17 bucks. Avis Budget Rental Car Group, uh, 13 bucks. Market Taxes, 10 bucks. Karuna Therapeutics, 10 bucks. And Madrigal Pharmaceuticals up almost 10 as well. To the downside, it's Saya Inc. down 21 bucks. 5% Old Dominion down 16, 4%. Aero Environment down 14 bucks, 10 percent. Powell Industries 10 percent or nine bucks. Humana up 860. Uh, That's a 1.7 percent move to the downside. But let's begin by taking a look at what? Let's go switch panels here. And let's go take a look at the equity future contracts. And what we're going to see out here momentarily, well, I'll tell you what we're going to see because we're going to go look at it. First, the upper right-hand corner, you should see the ES Mini. What do we know about it? Well, the ES Mini had a TD9 count top, had a Rhodes momentum indicator top that was negated on the trading session of December 1st. Even though it formed a dark cloud cover candle on the uh, 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 two days ago, on the 4th, there's no A to B equals CD pattern that we could draw in here. There's no other topping signal. So all that was was just an interesting piece of information. Now we've got a new profile and it did form uh, as we took a look at it was the numbers that we took a look at yesterday to repeat those numbers. Support is down at 45.51, resistance up at 45.82. Now there's no topping pattern in the daily ES mini. Let's keep that in mind. If we take a look at the NQ, it still maintains its TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top and we simply have a uh, consolidation with inside its daily profile. In overnight trading or early this morning, price got up and tagged and touched and rejected that green oscillator and change line, 16.038. So that is a point of resistance out there. But we know where support is at, 15.748. And below that would be 15.465 and a quarter. The Dow Equity Future contract, the rally this morning, what it did was it set up the potential for a TD9 count top that confirms today and completes tomorrow. All that needs to happen today is a close above the close of bar number five. The close of bar number five, uh, that was from November 30th, that was at 
36010. As long as a Dow equity future contract closes above that, we will get a TD nine count top today. So you got a top in the NQ, you've got a top that is likely to form inside of the Dow equity future contract. And now as we take a look at the Russell 2000, it also has a top. It formed a sell the D point pattern yesterday. This morning, price got up and tagged and rejected its TD nine count breakdown level, 1892.70. Now, if price were to close at 1892.70, negates that sell the D point pattern. But basically what we've got is we've got three of the equity future contracts that look like at day's end they will have tops but we don't have the same thing with the ES mini so how are we going to know if the ES mini has topped out here and that's a great question let's try to answer that question really by going to the black background screen and the reason is I think it's just visually easier to see on the black background screen so let's go do that and here I'm going to open up the ES mini and in the case of the ES mini what I would share with you is we take a look at the top that formed out here, a small top, back in July. Actually, it's a little bit more than a small top. And I, I just, this has nothing to do with whether there was a, a topping pattern or not out here. I believe there was, but that doesn't matter. We knew we got a potential change in trend. It's always a potential change in trend. Anything can happen at any point in time. But we knew we were getting a potential change in trend when price closed below the bottom of its profile. And that was back on August the 4th out there. And that was the first clue. We then had a new profile that formed. We got closed below the bottom on August 9th. On August the uh, 10th, or really, quite frankly, on uh, in the following session as well. So that was our signal of a change in trend. So now knowing that, don't know whether we're going to get any kind of a top out here, but I think that we are. Um, what would be requirement for the ES Mini to say, okay, I'm ready to join along, and I've got a change in trend? Well, that's pretty easy. So that's now the benefit of a narrow trading range out here or a narrow profile. And that means if we get two consecutive closes below 45.51, that tells us that the ES Mini has likely topped, or at least we've got some type of short-term change in trend out there. So now let's go back to the white background charts and let's go take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract that formed that TD9 count top. Why? Because when we get the topping patterns out here on a daily time frame, what we look for is on those intraday charts, we look for other topping patterns to help us confirm that. And we take a look at this here. If we look at a five-hour time frame chart, you'll see you'll sort of see a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Now, we don't have the bearish reversal candle as we speak just yet, but if we did get that, that would confirm a top. If we take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, same thing. We've got the pattern. Now, this current candle is going to complete at 2 p.m. Again, if we get a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a top. We have the same thing going on in the two-hour time frame. Now, this candle is going to complete at 12 noon. So at about another 47 minutes out there, if we get a bearish or a bearish engulfing candle, a dark cloud cover, whatever it is, a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a, at least for its time frame, a top. We've got nothing on the 60-minute other than price getting up to its breakdown level. That was at the 36,290. Well, guess what? That can be where a market forms a top. I've got a wave number seven pattern on the 30-minute time frame chart. So we most certainly have a top there, the 15-minute ATD9 count top. And Rose meant to indicator signal on the 10-minute. So now it's really up to the four-hour and the five-hour chart. And you can see here today is going to become bar number nine. Now, again, inside the Dow Equity Future contract, that may not take hold until tomorrow. So... I ask you out there, do you think we're approaching a top? Do you think we're approaching a top? And if you do, maybe write to me. Tell me the reasons why. We come back from this breakout here, other than what we just took a look at, I'll share with you the Dow Equity Future Contract seasonal pattern. And let's see what it has to say. Let's let it cast its vote. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're taking a look at the 126-year uh, seasonal chart for the uh, Dow. And that uh, red vertical line is where we're at today. And what we can see here <laughs> is that, uh, on average, over the last 126 years, the Dow has formed a top by December 8th. Today is December 6th. Friday will become December 8th. And then what we typically see is a move lower. Now, move lower lasts through either December 16th to the December 20th time frame out there. And that's when you know, most people take a look at the Santa Claus rally. You and I, we actually begin that where the market makes its seasonal low, which is back in October. And this year it did it on October 26. So we can see that from a seasonal standpoint that uh, we there's, there's reasons to be looking for a top. Now that top may be nothing more than a consolidation with inside those profile levels. So there's no way for us to know at this stage here whether it's a top of meaning. I don't think that it is a top of meaning, but only time will tell. Now, if we're going to get a top inside of the Dow, the NQ, uh, the ES Mini, the Russell 2000, even though we got signals, let's say, on three of the four of the equity future contracts, so the NASDAQ, which has taken price lower, but when we take a look at the NASDAQ, what we also know about the NASDAQ is that it is just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. So even though we've seen a bit of a low, uh, a move lower inside the NQ out here in the NASDAQ 100, what we haven't seen is a break of that profile support. And that's really one of the things that's needed in order to generate a potential change in trend to signal out there. So what we would do next here, what I would do next, what we're going to do next, you and I, is we're going to go take a look at how the top eight instruments inside the NDX 100 are trading. Now, the interesting thing here is, shoot, I can't tell for sure which of my two screens. Costco, that's the wrong one. So give me a moment. Let me go back and change it. That, those are the second eight. I want to do the primary eight out here. But I was having some problems, had to do some technical changes. I did those technical changes, and it screwed up where my screens are located. So now, there we go, Apple. 
Now, if we take a look at Apple, there is no top right now. Apple did have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, was negated yesterday uh, as price closed above all those resistance points. Now, it still has that Rhodes Mintum indicator signal triggered. I would say a top doesn't start occurring unless we get a confirmed top inside of Apple. And that needs a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You also at least want to see price close below that green oscillator and change line. Currently, that's printing out at the 192.14 level. In the case of Microsoft, it has a TD9 count top, but it has found supported its breakout level of resistance in the bottom of its profile. 365.16 is the level there. So right now, all we have inside of Microsoft, we'll take a look at this a little bit more in detail for Nancy. But Nancy, right now, all you've got is a consolidation with inside its profile levels. 365.16 is supported 374 75 is resistance it got up to a high today of 374 18 that works for stevie we take a look at amazon out here amazon does not have a topping pattern so much like the es mini that we looked at amazon's going to have to close below 141 47 to give us some type of change in trend signal in the case of the NVIDIA out here, well, what NVIDIA is doing today, it's completing its TD9 count bottom. That bottom formed on bar number eight. That was a couple of days ago. It's back inside its profile. If it can stay back inside its profile, it should go target the 479 level out there. So in the case of NVIDIA, it's going to have to take out that TD9 count bottom. That means a close below 450.10 to really signal to you and I that it's got some type of change in trend that's in place out there. We take a look at Facebook. Facebook is trading below profile. It's trading below support. So that might mean that it wants to get down to the 296.86. So we're okay there. In the case of Broadcom, ABGO is the ticker symbol. Well, today's going to become bar number eight. And if price can poke below yesterday's low, and yesterday's low is 905.85, that would trigger bar number eight. Of course, bar number nine has to complete tomorrow. But we know a successful bar number eight turns into a TD9 count pattern 90% of the time. So that says now, what, so if you're looking to go short, you don't want to have go to do that. You don't want it to form a TD9 count bottom. And it may not. We don't know. With regard to the googly one, you know, price is still back inside its profile there. So we're going to need to really see a close below the low from December 4th. That's at 129.40 to tell us we're ready to move to the downside. And Tesla, I believe we're going to take a look at Tesla. I don't know if we're taking a look at Tesla or not. We are right now. In the case of Tesla, we don't have any kind of a top. And price is above the top of that daily profile. Tesla may be wanting to head to 265.41. So you see, if we if we summarize what we're taking a look at here in the top eight holdings that make up more than 50% of the NDX 100, uh, calling a top right here is a bit suspect. It's a bit suspect. So you know what Stevie likes to say? Hmm, something to think about. So we've got something to think about. No action I would suggest taking today, but I could be wrong on that. But uh, I'll just share with you what the uh, charts are communicating to us, and you go from there. Let's go take a look at our first request out here. Let me close these charts down, free up some of the resources out there. But our first request is from, uh, shoot, that's hidden. Their first request is from Alton. And Alton, uh, he sent them this yesterday. They get it till well after the show had uh, closed. Uh, but we're going to go take a look at CHK. If you give me a moment, we'll get to that set of charts out here, daily, weekly, and the uh, monthly. So we take a look at CHK. What do we know? Well, you know, there is something else I need to tell you about the Dow Equity Future contract. Remind me, would you? We take a look at CHK. Well, today's going to become bar number eight out here. It's trading below the bottom of its daily profile, the bottom of its weekly profile. Uh, it could be targeting the bottom of its monthly profile. Its monthly profile's target would become 61.58. So this says look for a TD9 count bottom to form between today and Friday out here. Um, that's what I would be looking for. But I would wait for at least tomorrow or the next day. So let's come back and take a look at CHK Alton on a 30-minute time frame out here as we take a look at You don't see the screen? Okay, sorry. I Sorry about that, guys. Change to the right. I changed to I got you. Uh, here we go. There we go. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Bill. My wingmen out there. All right, so now we take a look at CHK. Well, let me pull this back here. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. You'll see today what could become bar number eight out here. There's A to B equals CD to the downside. I mean, it looks like this thing really wants to head lower. It's trading into um, a swing point on a weekly basis. Now, it's only you know a couple hours into Wednesday's trading session. That swing point has 9.3 million shares. This has done 3 million shares already out here. So... It seems like lighter volume, but uh, you're still trading inside that swing point. It may go down and test that. It may blow it away, and that's at 69.68. I was going to mention that 30-minute time frame chart here. 
uh, before uh, before uh, before I uh, uh, change to the proper screens out there, and you'll see that this is negating a well. It's got a wave number seven uh, pot pattern out here. Uh, that's those uh, red. So that needs a higher low to confirm on a 30-minute bar that pattern. And that would then just suggest at least a bounce up into its oscillator and change on its 7556 Alton. Let's just be careful here. Let's come back and take a look at it perhaps on Friday. But in the meantime, while you watch it, look at the uh, intraday charts out there. See if you can find some type of bottoming pattern that would then uh, suggest to you you might have a trade out here. I hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at NEO. N-I-O is the ticker symbol, and that's for pops inside the Tiger's Den. And NEO right now is trading out at about 814. Let me get it up on my other charts. I likely have a delay. Let's see where it's really trading at, 807. So what this is dealing with here right now, pop, it's dealing with profile resistance. I think you can see that. That's at 811. If price were to close above 811, that would tell you it wants to seek out higher price. And for that, we'd look to prior swing points. But we'll look at the other time frame charts as well. So we get back to this break. We're going to go take a look at the NEO for POP. And after that, we'll take a look at Mosaic, then the GDX, and BYON, Palantir, Microsoft, RTX, Marathon Oil, Lightsweep Crew. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks.
So we're taking a look at NEO out here. It has got resistance up to that 811 area. Price closes above that. Then the next uh, price target that it's got to deal with is this bearish engulfing candle here from November the 6th. And that high is at 851. That uh, swing point there has volume of 43 million shares. So far today, you're up with 74 million shares. So that's a beautiful thing. I'd say as long as you close above 786, this should go test that 851 level. Now, the next area of resistance out there above 851 would be 907. That'd be the bottom of the weekly profile. And then above that, I think we'd be looking at about 920. Well, we'll be looking at the 921. Yeah, 921 would be the numbers that we'd be looking at. I would stay with this. Now, what you're really watching for here. Um, so the weekly's got a bottom, the monthly's got a bottom pattern out there, and certainly the daily has a bottom pattern. That formed a couple of days ago with that Rhodesman to mitigator signal. Today is going to be, or appears that today will be, bar number three of consecutive moves to the upside. You'd like to see this, if this is a real change in trend out here, you'd like to see this, you'd like to see this get to at least bar number five. Tomorrow, get into bar number four. You know, four bars can still just be a knee-jerk reaction. Once you get beyond that, it's pretty much a signal of some type of change in trend. It's not a guarantee, but it's pretty close to a guarantee. We can see here that NEO did have a four-day consecutive rally. That was back on September 29th out there, and then it continued to move lower. The other thing you'd be looking for are pullbacks of, let's just say, two bars two to three bar pullbacks out there. So uh, that's what you'd be looking for in the case of NEO. If you are along this, uh, I would stay long for sure out there. And uh, best of luck to you. Let's go take a look at our next instrument request. That was to take a look at Mosaic. That's for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. MOS is the ticker symbol. So let's get over and see what Mosaic is doing. MOS. And Mosaic is uh, trading above the top of its daily profile. It's kind of a neutral type signal. Uh, we can make the case that this has formed a sell the D point pattern out there. A couple days ago, we got a bear shooting star. We're trading below the oscillator and change line. Um, where is support? The first level of support on any kind of a pullback here is going to have to be the top of its profile. Now, this had a nice breakout with pretty decent volume. What I'm referring to is this big gap to the upside. That's the gap that took place on November 14th. The volume there, about 4 million shares. Now, when this was pulling back yesterday into that gap, it was with 3.9 million shares. So similar type volume. Um, so maybe price is going to get down and close that gap, get back to the uh, top of that profile, 34.62 out there. So that's got some real potential. Uh, yesterday was day number two of consecutive moves lower out here. Let's open up that chart, see what we're looking at. Uh, we have seen bounces occur after that, but you can kind of see the normal dance steps here. Uh, it's a Texas two-step in this case here for Mosaic. Two down, two up, two up, two down. Maybe today is going to begin uh, two more to the upside out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Mosaic. I hope that that helps you out. Hope I answered your question. I didn't write down anything else. I was working too fast to make sure I at least got all this stuff in. So let's go to the next request out there. That's to take a look at the GDX. That was also inside the Tiger's Den, I believe, RP28. And RP, with regard to the GDX, what we don't have in the GDX is a topping pattern. What we do have in the GDX is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. And that ranges from 3046 at support and 3162 as resistance. Uh, remember, the GDX is going to get its P's and Q's from gold, the direction of gold. And if we were to take a look at gold, well, you know, we've already we've already done that. I'm not going to change screens because I'm probably screw that up again out there. Although I'll change screens when we have to. But what I can share with you is gold is also consolidating with inside its daily profile. Go figure. How does that work? Well, we know it works because the two are so directionally correlated. Now, with regard to, I just wish I could find what I'm looking for. Where the heck did that go? Did I delete something? Oh, it's right in front of me. Okay. So with regard to, oh no, I didn't. It's. Um, so gold is consolidating between the price level of 2023 and 2080. Now, will the consolidation hold? I don't know the answer to that. But if you're looking to take a long position, the GDX itself, you could take one at around the 3046, 3051 ish level out there. That's been tested the last couple of days, a third test, and that holds. That would be the area. And if price closed below that level, I'd probably jettison it right away. Just be in a kind of uh, be an experiment, so to speak. But there's no top. But there is a top inside of gold, and there is a top inside of silver. And we know that silver is trading below uh, profile level, whereas gold is not. So it's not a real clean trade out there. I don't want to open up all of my GDX charts out there just simply because it'll 
take a little time to do that. But G-Man, um, oh, sorry, RP, you're asking about the uh, GDX. What I would do is I'd go take a look at the individual equities in, that make up the GDX, and I'd see which of those are the strongest ones, which of those have formed the uh, bottom patterns out there. And if you find something, maybe that's a way to go ahead and play it. But the GDX is really waiting on uh, gold and silver out there. And gold and silver are giving you and I two different messages out there. So not really sure which is the one that's going to come through. Let's go to the next request out there. And that's to take a look at the BYON. Don't think we've taken a look at BYON before, but we are going to now. BYON is trading uh, it's going to form bar number eight of a TD nine count. Trade around twenty three twenty three. That was Stevie's basketball number. Not twenty three twenty three, but twenty three was. That was my home jersey. Thirty four was the away jersey out there. Well, this is going to form a TD nine count. Uh, uh, well, it's going to form bar number eight of a TD nine count. In order for bar number nine to complete tomorrow, BYON just simply needs to close above the close of bar number five out there. So note this on your pad of paper, 2146. It seems likely that we're going to get a TD9 count top that completes by Monday. Now, what should transpire? You can see that oscillator and change line has changed colors, went from red to green. Typically, when you form a top and you've got that scenario out there, price will pull back to test that. Now, a bullish test would be a test and rejection of the 1952 level. Now that's 1952 because we're looking out of my screen right now. It, I guarantee you it will not be 1952 when that test unfolds, but at least you have the idea as to what to anticipate. The weekly chart looks muy bueno out there. Price of trade above profile. Tell us a longer term buy on. That is beyond ink. Is that the beyond meat thing out there? Oh, yeah. Disgusting. In any event, it uh, looks like the stock here wants to make a move up towards that 3177 level. But before it can get there, it needs to go tackle the top of its monthly profile, and that would be at 2684. Um, I don't have anything else with regard to buy on beyond meat out there, other than uh, for those of you that eat it. God bless you. Let's go take a look at Palantir, and that's for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's End. Now, with regard to Palantir, I don't believe that I'm with you, Mike. Uh, PLTR. Let me do that on the screen here because I didn't have that. Um, I didn't have that. Uh... Hey, when I want plants, you know what I eat? I eat plants. Yeah. And when I want meat, you know what I eat? I eat real meat. I eat real good meat. And when I want fish, I eat fish. It's a beautiful thing. All right, we got Palantir out here. What do we know about Palantir? Palantir formed a wave number seven top. That's a letter G. That's a small courtesy of the Chapman wave out there, although it is not the Chapman wave. And what we have right now is an A to B equals CD to the downside. So the B point out here, that took place on the trading session of November the 27th. 58 million shares were traded then, and that was passed with 104 million shares. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. PLTR, I want to get this going on. On my other charts out there. I'll draw on that A to B equals CD. You guys might want to do the same as well. Let's see if we come up with the same numbers when we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, so we're taking a look at uh, Palantir out here. We talked about the A to B equals CD pattern that it confirmed. I've got my black background charts up there, just easier to draw the A to B equals CD pattern to get right to the exact uh, price projection levels out there. Although we use those really more as guidelines versus a exact level. And what it, uh, what Palantir did today was it uh, gapped down. And it attacked that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection level. The price projection was 1708. We got down to 1705. Does that mean you should buy it here? Absolutely not. You're looking for some type of bullish reversal candle. And that makes today a little bit difficult. Why? Because at day's end, you could get a bullish hammer candle. However, you've got a gap to the downside. One's a bearish candle, the other's a bullish candle. How do you know what the real meaning is? What I do is I'd fill in that candle and take it up to the low of yesterday, and then that answer the question, is that still a hammer candle? If it is, then it's a hammer candle. And if it's not, which I doubt that it would be because the body of that candle would be too large, then it's more of a gap to the downside. Nonetheless, what you would wait for is the next bullish reversal candle to generate a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, price will go target its next price projection area. For Palantir, that's at 1620. Now, the reason that this could be a bottom, number one, price is pulled back right to a level where it broke out from. So let's not ignore that. When this breakout is different than the TD9 count breakouts we look at, this is just simply one that's a breakout with price and volume. This gap to the upside on the trading day of November the 2nd, and it does with 170 million shares. And price is pulling back today with 56 million shares. Now, that 56 million is within two hours of trading. That's still really good volume there. So I would stick, stay away from um, from Palantir at the uh, moment, um, but continue to watch it because the A to B equals CD. The weekly is kind of interesting. It has a Rhodes Mentum indicator top, but price has found support at the top of that profile. That's at 17.57 out there. Let's go to our first caller. It is Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. Sue, thank you for okay. calling. Thanks for holding. How are you thank today? You so much, Steve. I appreciate that so much. My I pleasure. don't hold X O M. Would you please help me? X O M and M R O. You bet, you bet. So we'll down. take it. Yes, well, well, you've got oil that is uh, literally being crushed uh, as we speak. 
And so we know that the energy sector and XOM is the uh, one of the largest holdings inside the energy sector is directionally correlated. So what we really need to try to understand is uh, both XOM and Lightspeed Crude. Now, the potential good news with ExxonMobil is the fact that today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. We're also in wave number seven. That is letter G. Wave number seven needs a higher low to confirm that uh, pattern. The TD9 count just needs to close below bar number five today. That means it needs to just simply close below 102.74. Now, on a TD9 count out there, Sue, that, that low, this is the bottom we're looking at, can form on the bar following bar number nine. It could also get negated. And that means that price could close immediately right below the low of the pattern. If that happens, that tells us that ExxonMobil is headed much lower. But on a daily time frame, this suggests that ExxonMobil could or should top between today and tomorrow. When I look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, to me this says, well, it ain't today. Oh, I take that back. So on a 30-minute time frame chart, it has a TD9 count bottom that formed at 10 a.m. The level you're watching here, Sue, is the 30-minute bars. And any close on a 30-minute bar below 99.42 negates that signal, and that would then tell us that today would likely not be the day that we see ExxonMobil form that low. Now, when I say form a low, I don't know for what period of time. It could just be a bounce up into its oscillator and change line. That would be its first target. That's currently printed at 101.33. And above that, on a daily time frame, we've got resistance at 103.49 followed by 105.39, 105.39 being a real key level of resistance out there. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, what you don't want to see this do is close below the low from the week of March 17th, and that low is at 98.02. If we get that, that likely tells us we're headed down towards about the 84.58 level. 84.58 oh is the bottom God. of the monthly profile. Uh, the, uh, weekly, the, the weekly chart has got a sideways consolidation, and that level of 98.02, that would basically be the bottom of that consolidation. So you've got potential for a bottom out here between today and tomorrow. You want to, and, and again, uh, we want to take a look at Lights Recruit. Is it okay if we do that, Sue, if we go take yeah, a look please. at Lights Recruit? Okay, yeah, so let's please. go see what Lights Recruit is signaling to you and I, see if there's any kind of signals here. Because of the directional correlation with regard to who's the dog, who's the tail, Lights Recruit is definitely the dog. ExxonMobil is the tail. But nonetheless, we still take a look at the signals for both. Now, when we take a look at a daily time frame for the January contract for Lights Recruit, we are in bar number four. So we do not have any kind of a bottom signal here. There is an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. That's going to require a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. So I'd be on the lookout for that, Sue, some type of bullish reversal candle that confirms on the daily time frame a buy the D point pattern. On the weekly chart, the weekly chart shows that price is now trading into its swing point from back on March the 24th. The high of that swing point is 69.73. If we close inside that, odds favor price is going to get down and test that low. That low would be 64.37. Now, that's on a weekly time frame. But what this is suggesting to you and I here at this moment is today is not going to be the day that ExxonMobil uh, forms the TD9 count bottom with it being bar number eight out there. Um, what else can I look at here in Lightspeed Crew? Let's look yeah. at a 30-minute time frame chart. 30-minute time frame chart, I don't have any kind of bottom signal. The only signal I have for potential bottom comes from the hourly chart. And that says that by 1 p.m. today, you could see a TD9, well, really by 12 noon, you could see the TD9 count bottom, but that pattern will form at 1 o'clock. So here's the bad news. The bad news is you've got a bottom signal inside ExxonMobil. Still watch that, but we're not seeing anything in Lightspeed Crude out here. What I will share with you is if we take a look at the January 2024 contract, we are going to see that we are entering bar number seven of consecutive weekly closes lower. And I'm going to have to go really take a look at uh, some other charts out here. This one just takes me back into the 2020 time frame, January of 2020, January 2019. And, Sue, in that entire time period, we have never seen seven weeks of consecutive moves lower out there. That says that there's going to be some type of relief rally soon. I just don't know when that soon is out there. But you've got the numbers to pay attention to out there. If I provide you with the information you were looking for? Yeah, 99.42, look for that one number, right? Okay. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll continue. I'll continue, you know, in the next on t tomorrow and Friday. Well, I'll make sure we're looking at Lights Week Crude and the energy sector uh, as well for you. So I know that you listen to the okay. show. So, Sue, 
Always nice to speak to you, and thanks so much for the call. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Steve, you the best. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Been, and yeah, so there was a request also. Thank you so much. Okay, you bye. You, you, you too. So there was a request to take a look like to recruit. So in essence, we've done that. So I have no reason to I'll take that one off my list. There was also another request out there to take a look at uh, MRO, which I believe that uh, Sue had asked for. So let me get back to that set of um, charts out there. We'll put in MRO. We're not going to have much time to take a look at it because we're about to go to a break. But let's just see, does MRO show any kind of a bottoming signal like uh, like ExxonMobil did? So this is going to, uh, when the music's going to start playing here shortly, but let's uh, see if we get these charts here to populate. Come on, populate. we got about maybe 10 to 15 seconds. I'll tell you what, folks. We'll take a look at uh, Marathon Oil Corporation when we get back from this break. We're going to look at Marathon. Uh, Microsoft, RTX, and oh, that Dow equity future contract. I got to give you what to be paying attention to. We'll be right back. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Folks, we'll have to be kind of quick here to get through these requests. Marathon Oil does not have the same pattern that ExxonMobil did with regard to a TD9 count bottom. So, Sue, so it's not really looking at uh, great out there for the energy sector. Let's go to the next request. That is uh, from, um, let's take a look at RTX. Alton wants to look at RTX. And Alton, uh, this formed a TD9 count bottom. It completed that pattern on November 22nd. Today is bar number nine of a TD9 count. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow. This suggests that RTX should pull 
pull back to about the 81.85 level. If it closed below 81.85, 78.48 and 79.92 are game. Let's go take a look at Microsoft for Nancy out here. We take a look at Microsoft. We'll use this set of charts. Microsoft right now, just a good old-fashioned consolidation with it with inside its daily profile. 365.16 is support. 374.75 is resistance. It does have a Rochemitton and a TD nine count top. When I look at the intraday charts here for Microsoft, I don't see anything significant other than the 130 minute chart that formed a TD nine count bottom and price ran right into resistance at that oscillator and change line. I'd say more likely than not, Microsoft is going to go tag that support level at 365.16. Let's go to our next request, which is to take a look at. Well, I don't know. Let me see here. It's to take a look. At, oh, the Dow. The Dow Equity Future Contract. Let's go. Well, let me give you the level to be paying attention to here that I believe will be the signal that we have a change in trend. And that's going to come from the 60-minute time frame chart. Here, those red horizontal lines are all TD9 count breakout levels on a 60-minute time frame. And the one thing that we can see is since the rally that began back in October, we have not seen a close below one of those. So, the one that's up on the table right now is at 36106. That's the level we'll be watching today for the Dow Equity Future contract. Let's close out the show for Mike by taking a look at Bitcoin, BTC out here. So let's pull that up on our screen. Bitcoin, this is the December contract that we are taking a look at. And we don't see any kind of a top on the daily time frame, on the weekly time frame. Price above its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. I see some short-term tops out here on the intraday charts, but nothing on the daily. Looks to me like Bitcoin wants to continue its rally. Folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned for great programming, and I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Those in the den requests that I didn't get to, I'm going to put those at the top of my list for tomorrow. We'll make sure to get to those. Take care, folks. Be safe out there.